What's up, guys? Welcome to another local band smoke. I'm your host, is higher than most BG, and I'm here with the man, the myth, the legend. Now, first of all, I have to ask you before I actually intro you: is it <laughs> is it Ratalski? Because I really want to say Rattle Sky, and I just think that sounds badass. Um, that was my nickname growing up because nobody could say it. So Rattle Sky was a thing, or Rat was a thing, and I hated the Rat one. Ratalski. Ratalski. All right, Mr. Lloyd Ratalski, Ratalski a.k.a. Mm -hmm. Burn Like Mother <laughs> Stars. Right, I hated having to teach people my name, so I was like, yo, I'll just do the Mr. Burn, Burn Like Stars persona. I'm tired of explaining shit. I love it. At Burn Like Stars Forever. Now, you're out of New York, but what part of New York? I live in Cohoes right now, but Albany, New York is pretty much the center like area for like, it's like the middle ground. So if you were going to be doing something, you'd probably end up in Albany at some point. So it's kind of like that landmark. We all like uh, Josh lives right near Albany from frequent misconceptions. I live like a half an hour away. Like everyone kind of ends up down there. Gotcha. Uh, I've got a, a ton of questions for you, but one, I can go one. I just wrote down because I saw something in the background while you were out on break and i want to know how cool would it have been if the beats had made a real album yo for real you talk, you talk <laughs> i'm talking about, about doug. doug i'm talking about our boy doug funny hell yeah <laughs> that was something you know what when i saw my buddy nate um does a lot of artwork and he goes on tour and he finds these random ass like drug affiliated cartoon stuff and i always snag him from him so when I see the Doug and his best friend dog smoking with dabs and stuff, I yeah. had to take that. That is I'm awesome. I'm waiting for my Rick and Morty one. That is awesome. I love it. Okay, so like I said, tons and tons of questions. Um, when was the first time you tried weed? How old were you? Um, I don't even. Want, I don't want to. I don't want to wrap my mother up. So my mother and I and my stepfather <laughs> moved out to California when I was pretty young. So I think my. I think my mom was always smoking growing up, but I think I was maybe a little too young to recognize what it was, or she did a really good job of keeping it out of sight. So a lot of people would think because, you know, your mom smokes, you would smoke with her or something like that. My first bandmate who was like a real big role model to me um, named Johnny Pimentel, um, he got me into smoking and writing music. He was always smoking and I wanted to be like, like he was the dude to be at the time. So it was like, you know, I'm gonna start smoking and getting into it. And it just really relaxed me. I'm a very hyper talk a lot and get really excited. So it's good for me to kind of wind down and, you know, so it ended up being a thing for me. What, uh, what are you more of an Indica sativa? What, what's your favorite strain? Indica. Obviously because the hyper turned to tone down yeah. the hyper. Yeah. When uh when my lady goes and gets uh like weed and stuff like she knows what to like get me to like keep me calm and centered and stuff straight OGs, <laughs> pretty much is what it sounds like. But on the opposite end, you you quit alcohol a couple years ago. What what was the motivation? Like a lot of people, they find something, they find themselves something drastic happens. What what caused you to put it put it away? Um, you know, I never was a huge drinker. Uh, to begin with, uh, I think when I moved to Sacramento, California, that was probably the first time that I really got into like a bigger band scene because the boardwalk was down there. That's where Dance Gavin Dance, a Skylet Drive was. So like that was like a really happening area of music. So Sacramento is a, a more um, richer kind of area. So a lot of those kids had money and big houses, the parties. So Johnny and I started going to a lot more parties and, you know, there was drinking beer pong, all that fucking shit. And it was fun for a little while, but one thing I never liked was how bad people get when drinking kind of got out of control. And when you start dealing with either like the drunk best friend or the drunk chick who just gets in that stupid drunk person mode, like that's probably one of my biggest pet peeves because there's no uh, conversating or getting any kind of like um, They're just responsible annoying. action from them. They're just annoying when I fight people and break stuff. Yes. And on top of that, I think when I hit 20, when my 21st birthday, we played, uh, we were the headliners at a boardwalk show and people were buying me drinks like none other. I was hammered the audio guy who was doing the audio for the show knew it 
And he was like, yo, I got your back. And he would like turn on the a reverb and the echo. So when he felt like I was doing a little drunk wobble, or I was going to fuck up. It, like, it would sound all shiny and I wouldn't have to hold out a note. And I think I watched that video and I was like, you know what? Fuck alcohol. I don't need that shit, bro. Just stay high. Like, I don't want to act like an idiot. I already do that on my own. I love it. That's a good. It's a really good reason. Um, okay. So you're talking about some of the earlier bands you're in. Are you, are you specifically talking about uh, Truth Among Wolves? Or... So if I was going to go through a history, I think the first legit band that I that started making a lot better moves was Ezra. And that was in Sacramento, Cali. Um, Johnny was part of that with me. He was the screamer. I was the singer. And he started doing, uh, we started driving like three hours from like San Francisco to Sacramento to record with these guys. And that was when we started first playing our bigger, bigger shows. Yup, this, this, this was going way back. I even had like good hair at that time, bro. Um, <laughs> that was that was a really sick show. Um, I had a sponsor at the time. Um, I think they were called Glam Star. Like that was the shit. We're just jumping around, and having fun. I wouldn't say my vocals were as good as they are now, but we all start from somewhere. Yeah. But that shit was probably like my favorite moment in like rising from music because that was like an emo band that like you know johnny and i like wrote so much of that and these guys were so passionate and like you know for some reason like a lot of people fucked with it so we were able to play these like six shows you know if you weren't mainstreaming you didn't get all these cool ass lights and all is, like, it, is that you right there with the the hat that's johnny that's, oh, that's oh yeah i could kind of tell when he put the mic down away when he put when he yeah, had it like johnny this. johnny has taught me so much he, if it wasn't for him i wouldn't have been in this band and or the band that we're watching and have done anything like he really he was a savage still is a savage but let's turn this on for a he's second he's got his family thing going now so everything kind of moves in a little bit. but this is it bro everyone had the emo hair like the tight skinny pants like that was the shit. <laughs> i had that phase i had the eyeliner phase the tight jeans phase Back in the day. <laughs> uh, yeah. A couple more random ones. I got a, I got a boatload. I got a boatload for you. Uh, Let's go, dude. I love this shit. Are you, are you uh, a sports fan at all? Hell of fuck yeah. Who are your teams? So I love watching football. I'm not a big football guy because I can't keep track of all the players because there's tons of those guys. I'm a huge NBA guy. I've seen Gold State Warriors play six times now. Your ass is going um, down tonight, son. You, you, Lakers. You know what? They've been so fluctuate. Like, I, <laughs> it's been hard to watch, man. Curry's been doing some fucking highlight reels. But other than that, you don't hear much from the team anymore. So You guys will be um, back in it hardcore next year when Clay comes back. Basketball is easier for me to keep track of because, you know, five dudes on the court, five guys off. But also, like, it's so personal when they get into a one-on-one -on -one situation and, like, they have to juke and move. I feel like football is too fast for me to keep up, and I like the one-on-one uh, -on -one intensity of basketball. So, huge basketball fan. I got a couple jerseys. I got a Kobe, jer Kobe Bryant jersey in my closet, Stephen Curry. I think I have a Carmelo Anthony somewhere. Oh, so you're just so. a fan of basketball as a whole, really? Yeah, that you know, I don't have a specific team, but I got players. Uh, Derek Rose is probably my favorite basketball player, and he's not doing super stardom shit right now, but he's a gangster, you know. He he might get six man of the year for the for the New York Knicks, but we'll see. He was getting saucy this time. He's been, <laughs> they get more saucy, not like he used to be. But I like the underdogs, dude. Like he's got that potential, and he could do it at any moment. So I like following those guys. In in this band or Truth Among Wolves, did you ever do screaming? Were you always a clean vocalist? I don't, I'm not an angry guy. And interesting you ask that. I can write screaming vocals. When Josh and I, uh, when Josh from Frequent Misconceptions and I started working together, I wrote in my home studio where I'm sitting right now, like the screams that he performed and I'm good at doing it. But when it comes to really unleashing that, I'm not an angry guy, man. I sound like a fucking girl half the time. So mm. I don't got it in me. So I can record a whisper scream and put distortion and sell it to somebody who can actually scream and ask them to jump on it with me. Gotcha. So that's the way to go. I've had, there's a few songs I think in truth among wolves where I think I hit a belt that kind of clashes into a scream, but there's, you won't find anything of me actually doing what Johnny's fucking doing right now or shit. How did you, how did you meet Josh? I assume you came from Sacramento to New York, but then how did you bump into him? Like, were you at a show somewhere and just heard so, him? How did that work out? Are you talking about Josh or Johnny? <laughs> Josh, not Johnny. All right, so Josh. Um, <laughs> when, so this has been my longest stay in New York. I've been living at Cohoes. It's been about like three years right now. Um, I was chilling off music. I knew Josh's um, baby mother on Facebook, and we were friends. And she told me that he was trying to get a band started. And I was like, 
I, you know, I've done this so many times. I really don't want to go through this right now. So like, I, I kind of want to focus on me. So um, unfortunately, and you know, rest in peace, she passed away and it was such a, I knew that was going to do something to him. Um, and when we go through tragic events like that, I think it brings out the very deepest of what we got in us. So when that happened, I was like, yo, like, you know, why not? So I hit Josh up. He had a song Unforgiven that he put out and, and it was it was super sick. And I was like, yo, listen, dude, I'm willing to do this to get it started. The only thing I ask is like, let me take lead for a couple of these songs and, and write them a certain way and get us rolling. And then, you know, let's get band members together and start writing together as a band. Because currently, I mean, all my songs and including FMs right now, they're written by two guys, which would be Randy Presquela. I can't say his right name right. And uh, Danny DeBello, who writes the instrumentals for all these. Um, we're watching Hollow Eyes right now. This was an instrumental made by Danny DeBella, which he uh, wrote all the instrumentals for us. And then I soft recorded my parts and Josh's parts, showed Josh, he liked it. And then we went to Randy and fucking laid it all out. Oh, yeah. And you were, you were infrequent for over a year two years how long would you say i don't even think we we got to, to the year mark um he had unforgiven out and then we did let it go and upside down for the first two songs and i wrote those specifically to really show off josh because i've already had songs out and like i want i want everybody on the team to be eaten in a way so i wrote those two songs in a way where you hear a lot more of josh than me and then with Hollow Eyes and On the Floor, then I started really like kind of mixing and like adding a little more um, oomph into mine. So him and I really shined together. I think maybe half a year almost. Uh, I would have to look at receipts from when I recorded with uh, Randy to remember that completely. But it's been about like 2020, 2021, I'll say maybe around there. Cool. Maybe almost a year. And I don't know if we're allowed to get into this, but this video started drama. Um, are we allowed to talk about that or we save that for another day? You know, I, I'm a really, I try to keep everything really light. And I think there wasn't really anything both parties did. So we made plans to go record in New York. We just finished on the floor. Um, the guy who does the videos, this video and on the floor and Hey You is done by Pac, uh, Paxton. And he's a fucking legend, by the way. Bless his heart. After we did on the floor, I was like, yo, why stop? Let's like fucking, how long, how much longer are you here? And he's like, yo, I'm here uh, three more weeks before I go back to Texas. So I was like, all right, what if we go to New York City and like do like the city sh like shots and like get some cool stuff? And he was down for that. The original plan was for us to get like a cheap hotel and run around the city. I hit up a close personal friend of mine, Andrea, who's helped uh, me with a lot of music stuff. And I was like, yo, would you want to kind of work together with us and help us get a penthouse so we can like really ball out? We've been like working hard. So that was the game plan. Um, I gave my room up to Josh and his girlfriend. So, you know, girl didn't have to sleep in the living room with all the boys and stuff. And recordings went really well all night. We did some crazy shit. It got to be the end of the night. And uh, I think everyone was getting tired and a little bitchy. It was raining all the time. So eventually everyone went to bed and in the morning I, I i couldn't explain you what happened josh and i started fighting i'm not gonna say what the shit back and forth was but yeah. it just started getting really personal and when things get personal in like a business to me i like to separate myself from it so as soon as that happened i was like listen dude i think together we built something that's gonna both take us off in our own ways so we have four like really decent great songs that you know showcase you and me I don't think over time Josh and I were going to stay in a band together because he's a phenomenal heavy vocalist and I'm a, I'll call myself decent a decent clean singer like you know we were going to go our own ways eventually so I mean it could have ended better sure um but you know it is what it is it is what it is it is what it is I still love him um him and I did some incredible fucking work he sounds super sick he just dropped his own single and he's doing awesome shit so it's like you know neither one of us are like we're all doing fine if anything this uh kind of brings his fans to my music and my fans for my music to his music and it's gonna help each other either way I love how you're positive about it that's cool you uh, gotta be bro like you know we all get bitchy we're all moody sometimes what what inspired hey you which is the first single post frequent correct um, what I left, what I left off uh, frequent, uh, yes, this was the next song I wanted to do super short. I really did have plans to do it, but since I left frequent misconceptions, I was like, well, fuck, I just put like all this money and effort and like, like a lot of writing ability that like, like that, like I've sat in this room, this very room for maybe like 
oh man, six hours at a time smoking, like trying to record his and I vocals. Like I put a lot of effort. So I was like, well, damn, I need something to show for myself. I had two weeks left with Paxson being here. I was like, yo, if I record this song super quick, will you help me make another video? So I have something and he agreed to do it. Paxson's a homie. And that's how I got this. What it's about, man, this shit's fucking sad. It's, you know? it's a deep one. It's a deep cut. <laughs> so the idea of the story is that we see megan looking through her phone and it's supposed to give off the impression she's looking at memories of her and i so in this video i'm not technically alive and she stumbles across the cd that i cleverly plays you know movie script and shit uh, a cd for her to find when she's sad so she plays the cd and what we do is watch her start to um, imagine herself in a happier place in her head so you see her dancing with me and like kind of dance in the room and see scenes of her and I together. And she's trying to escape the depression and put herself in a, a better place, which I think we all do in certain aspects of life. So every time you see me, you know, that's like her thinking back or imagining it, it's not actually happening. That was the concept. I want to get super creative with it, but you know, at a budget, like, you know, we're not, we don't got a whole bunch of money for this. So, you know, we just tried to be like really cute and clever about it. Yeah, it's an awesome but, song, man. You already know I love this song you you like help me like get more into it because like i said i just want to have a quick video and then more people really liked hey you so i was like i gotta be on to something man i can't you know i go from fm or frugal misconceptions that was doing really decent it's like i have to keep dropping like decent stuff so it's good to know that like i was doing something good all right so i kind of push that and megan super fucking awesome girl didn't have to really give her anything to do this she just wanted to do it and i thought a fair trade was to promote her instagram and stuff she got another music video that she did right after this and she's a fucking awesome girl we're really good friends oh yeah cool 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 uh what is one album you would take to an island an island you can only bring one any genre i can only bring one album to an island you only bring one. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> Damn. Uh, you know what? Ooh, it's gonna be a Chiodos album. Ooh, Grand Coda. Only yo, Craig Owens was probably the first real singer that I could relate to vocally because he was crazy with his falsettos and his head voice, and that's really how I write and try to develop my stuff, and. I got I got my tattoo all the world's a stage and then I saw a poster of him soon after he has the same fucking tattoo so I was like yo that was destiny I'm gonna one day meet this dude and we're gonna like be chest tattoo buddies that's <laughs> just like my thing about that I would probably take uh you're gonna have to make me look it up what was uh the first one is I know it has all Neroids beware on it but I don't remember the title of it no, the one with all uh, uh, there's no penguins in Alaska. Whatever that CD was. That's that's the same me. one. That's the same one. Oh, the thing, that was such a monumental album. So all's say, L, all's well that ends well. Yeah, so it's between that or the used All Love and Death or the CD before it. Burt McCracken is my favorite yeah, fucking yeah. scream Check of this out. Life. Check this out. In love. This ain't no, it says and death. You fucking know, this, bro. This Burt McCracken sent us. In love and death, right there. I'm a little jealous of that. I'm not gonna lie. I never thought of getting anything uh lyrically like on me from Bert, but I should have. That's fucking dope. I have a wild Bert story. It's really, really disgusting. Um Bert is one of my I've never met him, uh, but one of my idols for a long time until this day, but I still respect him. I still listen to every used album, especially the newest one that just came out was which hey, is dude. excellent. Fire but I, I've actually seen Bert hit the needle in person Ooh, at taste of chaos stories about it many years ago he has a heart right here on his bend right there and he hits it in the heart anyway let's move on from that that's gross uh <laughs> what's it this what's out of show <laughs> he threw up on you you keep <laughs> that, that you better sell that throw up on eBay he would throw up and there was a show it may have been water but whatever he was doing that was near me I got wet and I assumed he threw up on me and I was gonna go with that <laughs> <laughs> wild wild uh live show stories what's the best video game of all time or the game that you've played more than any other video game for those that don't know we we talk video games off off the stream off the lives like just when we're just chatting we're pretty close like uh aside from what we do separately so anyway i like to keep i like to keep other champions in my corner bro and you a champion so you know <laughs> i love it 
Um, Knights of the Old Republic. Ooh, like PlayStation um, 2? Is that PlayStation 2? I played it on Xbox. I, it probably was for PlayStation 2. It was Xbox. It was the RPG Star Wars game. Mm-hmm. I fucking was super into that. That or Fable. Those were my favorite games of all time. I've beaten every Fable. But the Knights of the Republic one, is that the one where you can, like, lightsaber the bullets back at the Stormtroopers? No, that was the newest one that came out. The The game that I'm thinking of, this was probably, like, 10, 15 years ago. It was an RPG. They had Knights of the Old Republic and then uh, Knights of the Old Republic Return of the Sith. And it was an RPG. You started out blank and you learned your force powers and got your own lightsaber. And you could, uh, your it was one of those games where your dialogue choices affected the outcome of the scenario. And I love shit like that. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm huge on Skyrim. So someone's being a bitch, it's just like, no, I don't want to do the nice thing, kill them. And then, you know, they do the force lightning. And I was like, yes, I'm evil. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. You know, for, for someone who tries to be lit in high energy, like I have to get like, you know, the aggressiveness out through my video games. <laughs> gotcha. I love it. Yeah, uh, Skyrim. Skyrim and Fallout, not the new Fallout. Um, oh, those are tough. Those are see, those are legendary, bro. Mm-hmm. I probably put a thousand hours into Skyrim over like twelve years. Not to brag and get all my nerdy shit. It's kind of hard to see right here, but this PC, uh, if I'm adding everything right, including the three monitors that I got, definitely over five grand right now. I am dedicated to my fucking PC gaming. What what graphics card you got? <laughs> Uh, right now I have a 3080 or no I have a 2080 super um an i9 CPU uh four ram sticks of memory uh three hard drives three monitors fucking it, 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 it all adds up but well I dang can't a, I can't get a 3080 yet well my idea was like you know I pe- people have really supported my music and a lot of friends really backed me up. So it's like, I wanted to find a way that I can force myself to stay home. So I built myself a fucking laboratory that costs as much as a car. So I feel stupid when I'm not home working on music or, you know, playing games or something. So like I force myself to be here. <laughs> that was kind of my thinking. I got you. I only have a 1650. Like, why am I go out drinking at the, huh? Well, my card's only a, a NVIDIA 1650. It's a little bit of Weak. an older one. We need to rise that up. I know. Be having that I got. A, I got an order of operations though. The, the next one is this is getting changed, and then I need that that Go XLR mixer thing. Uh, I saw that, and I've wanted to get one of those too, and they're super sick. And you're gonna fucking get it, so stop worried about it. It's so small for five hundred dollars, but I see everyone that's a pro has it. Small but, but powerful, bro. Little little packages come in big ways, dude. That's Let's true. Go. Yo, how nervous were you the first time you ever stepped on stage? Um, I've, uh, so when I was in high school, I was a probably very closed off kind of like shy kid. I'm going to play and this in the background, by the way. I, we haven't listened to truth yet. This is old stuff. I, uh, I don't know if I can turn this down on here. Is there, is this on YouTube also or no? No, that, that shit's so old. I, we didn't really get to do much with truth among wolves. I'll, I'll give a brief story about that in a little bit. Um, I was a really nervous kid growing up. And um, my mother and I moved around a lot. And when I moved to California, I actually got um, I got jumped by this like little group of skater gang kids um, from her school. Um, I was a little shithead. I was probably talking shit or somehow deserved it. But I was uh, it was the last day of school, and I had this kid come from behind me and smack me with a skateboard. And I had my friend with me, and it fucking really hurt. I managed not to cry, but I knew to keep my head down and just act like I was hurt and they went away. Anyway, ever since that moment, I never had a shy bone in my body. I literally just went out and did stuff from getting job interviews, from having to represent myself. I just learned to really talk and go big. So our first show was opening. I can't remember what band we opened for. And I may even think we may have headlined it because we sold more tickets, but it was the first show with Ezra and there was tons of people there. Um, I think the max was like 250 or 300. That doesn't sound like a lot, but when that amount of people get into that room, it's a lot of people. On your first show, that's that's a big one. Yeah, and my mother was there, <laughs> and my stepfather was there, like the works was there. And um, I was just chilling in the back. I didn't want to smoke weed, I was so nervous. I was like, yo, I don't want to be high, but Johnny fucking had my back. He was just like, yo, shut the fuck up. 
smoke this. We smoked it. And like, I literally said it out loud. I was like, yo, it's either I'm going to go out there and I'm going to be shy and closed off and look like a fucking idiot. Or I'm going to go out there and fucking be as lit and goofy as I can. And just literally put on a show. We just fucking went out there and did that, bro. There was a blow up doll. I'm pretty sure someone found was thrown in the <laughs> crowd. There was fucking friends of mine that were in the front that would like smack my hand and like, you know, start getting things going. It was a fucking beautiful moment. So That's awesome. I don't think I've had uh, a nervous experience. I think the stupidest show I played was at a community center um it was like a laboratory community center library for like youth and they wanted to put on shows and they didn't let us finish our six song set list because they said no cussing and johnny said he wasn't going to change the lyrics so he fucking sang the songs the way he did them and they stopped they turned off the fucking switch and told us that we had to leave so we all stayed in the back and i think uh for like another hour and just there was tons of emo kids just all hanging out drinking and they couldn't get rid of us for a while <laughs> that would probably be my most awkward experience at a show that is that is cool well what was the what was the first concert you ever attended for me, Damn. it was uh, Wings, Paul McCartney and Wings when I was six. Paul McCartney, that's baller. I don't remember um, anything about it, but that's what my parents always told me. Yo, I've been to way too many shows. I feel like I may have gone to something with my mother the first time, and I want to say it was Dave Matthews. I could totally be messing that up. The one that I remember the most was I think I saw the used at the war garden in san francisco and that was probably my first legit show and i even think the bled opened up for them which is like an old leg like, screamo band oh yeah so i think that may have been it and then i went to a bunch of warp tours after that and other shows so is that may have been dave matthews i'm not entirely sure dave matthews is uh, fire though so you know, you know dude how bummed are you that there's no war tour anymore it's fucking the worst news i heard to me war tour was like my number one concert every year for years and I, well, it was the one thing that brought all our bands together, right? You know, like, and not even only just like the bands we like, but it was the bands that were like connected to it. Like, I don't know, uh, Jeffrey Star got super big from Warped Tour as well. He wasn't like a screamo hardcore artist, but like he was a cousin of it. So like, it, it just it brought so many people together. I got to go to the last one for free, so yeah, that was, that was about it. Um, the only thing I ever wanted to do was see Less Than Jake at Warped Tour, and I saw them like three years ago, and I got Roger, the singer, to sign a shirt, and that was like what I always wanted to accomplish at Warped Tour. That's awesome. Less Than Jake was my shit. Super ska band, uh, trumpet, singer sings high. It's fucking oh yeah, it. dope, dope man. <laughs> That's they got that song, Dope Man, right? Yes, uh, Dope Man. Um, the science of selling yourself out. Good fucking shit. But they, they're, they're, those are the OGs, bro. Those are the type of people that decide shit when they play shows. <laughs> what what genre do you jam the most in your spare time? Uh, let me go through this. Uh, my favorite artist is Mac Dre, and he Ooh. was a rapper from the Bay Area. When I I moved in with um Johnny, <coughs> and he lived in Antioch, California. Damn son, which what? was um <coughs> I don't want to sound insensitive. It wasn't a white neighborhood lot of different cultures together so there was a lot of hip-hop and rap growing up there and for me who was always into rock and like screamo stuff i fucking loved mac dre and like the bay area hip-hop culture so believe it or not i'll probably listen to more hip-hop or something like the weekend um some justin timberlake up in there um i'll i'll bust out some bootsy collins bro some like, old punk stuff like it's funky bass I, you know, when I drive, I usually like to listen to classical music because it calms me down and doesn't get me messed up. I try to keep my ears open to everything. But if my playlist consisted of anything, mostly it's going to be a bunch of screamo bands like of Mice and Men, Sleeping with Sirens, you know, the works, Bring Me the Horizon, all them. Cool, cool, cool. Guy Jam. We have a huge vinyl collection here, me and my wife. So and Lana Del Rey is her favorite artist. So she plays Lana Del Rey and Stevie Nicks like nonstop. But I'm a big Lana Del Rey's a fox, bro. Yeah, she's she's dope. We seen her, we saw her live at the Hollywood Bowl. Um, but we we uh I jam a lot of jazz on the side. I like old school jazz. That's what's up. I think I sent you um a song that I was experimenting with that mm. was a little uh, jazzy and stuff. It was like, like a really that's soulful kind of the wave one. right now. Yeah. Bruno Mars and the kind cool of thing about that, that is I booked a, a recording date with Randy on July 1st to record a song called Juicy, which is a song, a style I've never done before. Which That's is the one you sent me. More, That's the one you sent me. It's going to be more Bruno mars type stuff. Like, I, I, I can't explain it yet, but it's goofy. And my video guy packs in, like, I sent it to him and he immediately was like, yo, you need to record that. That's, you've never done it before, but that sounds fucking cool. So I was like, all right, I'll try it. <laughs> like, why not? 
<laughs> if if Burn Like Stars could feature any artist on a track, who would it be? But it, but in that Ooh. style of music, like Burn style. Oh, okay. So it's got to be like on the emo side or screamo side and stuff like that. You know what? Ugh. I mean, everyone's going to make fun of me if I say it, but you know, I got to say Johnny Craig was like a fucking huge influence on what vocalists like needed to try to like imitate or something yeah. like he had such a way of bending notes and putting feeling and there's so many bands where we have incredible singers that sing in such high ranges and just like kind of stay up there but he was just so oh man if i could ask anybody to do it it would probably be him or burt mccracken um I haven't been a huge fan of the use lately in life. And I understand part of getting older and uh, maybe, you know, labels and everything. Dude, check out their new it. album. Check out their new, their newest. You know, I had a friend say that to me the other day. It's like, so oh, bro, good. Like the old stuff, like go listen to this new stuff. <laughs> Cause they had a period where it was a little weird, but Johnny Craig or Burma crack in 100%. I don't think Johnny Craig is too expensive right now. I mean, he's probably gotta be a thousand or 2000. I would I imagine. I don't but... pay for people. Yeah. Who know? does? There's, I understand a lot of friends have recommended, and I have a lot of artist friends that have that uh, feature X vocal thing where you know you can go on and find artists to feature on your stuff. I think that's a wonderful tool, but unless you're making huge waves, like there really isn't much motivation for people to do that. And I don't want to have to pay for someone to be on a track. I don't mind helping pay for studio time, but it's like I want them to be as into it as I am. And so I want to get to myself to a point where I don't have to pay somebody. Or if I do, that's the label doing it and not me. I want to get to a point where I can just talk to someone and be like, yo, we're both doing big things. Why don't you work with me on this? Did I ever tell you my, my Snoop Dogg story with my old band? No, I didn't know you have a Snoop Dogg story. <laughs> All right. So I was in this band called The Rebellion like 10 years ago. And we were on MTV and we were going to do a remix. And so I want, you were on fucking MTV. Uh, we were on the on demand part of MTV. So you could the way go. You were on TV, though. That's huge, like you right? could go to MTV's on demand and like play our music video. Um, no big deal. That's it. Well, it was cool, but it wasn't cool. But anyway, it counts as being on the TV. If you can only <laughs> access it from the TV, I'll take you're it. on TV. I'll take it. But <laughs> so, we, so we were like, we need a feature like we're talking about. And Snoop Dogg's manager was like, he's down to do it. You got to have 10 G's. We were like, we can get 10 Nailed. G's. And we could, we could at the time. But then he was like, but the thing is, you have to shoot a music video for it. He has to be in the music video. You have to provide uh, makeup, wardrobe, a uh, rental RV. It came out to 100 G's. And we were like, dude, all we want is to feature. And he's like, he's not going to do it unless you do all these other things for 100 grand. So we and were like, what? can't do it. That's shitty, but you know what? So good for a motherfucker who gets themselves to a position where they can make those demands though for real. it sounds shitty and i don't ever see myself being like that i think i would do goofy things like i believe the word itinerary if i was going to go play a show and they were to be like what kind of accommodations do you want i may do that corny thing where you get the m&ms i'd be like i want all green m&ms and nothing but because that's an old <laughs> lesson of you want to make sure that they pay attention to the smaller quest so they don't fuck up your live show mm. i would do a little shit like that but i don't know if i need everyone to pay for everything that shit's too wild but you know, if you a gangster like that, why not? Yeah, <laughs> if you could pull it. Uh, so are we are we premiering the new single? So, you know, you've been nothing but a huge support. And you've let me chat your ear off about music. So I thought it would have been fun to have you be the first person to review it. And then I was going to list it on YouTube. But I so, so you want me to shoot, so you want me to shoot the review right after this interview? Motherfucker, let's go. Okay, cool. We'll, we'll, end, we'll end after that. Let's talk. We got. I got a Buddy, couple I more. Love you. You do I love you too, brother. Time. I love you I'm too, brother. I'm not releasing the song until you do it, though. So the longer you take, the more people have to wait. So you know, it's on you. You're amazing. I'm gonna make them wait. About it's literally on YouTube. Unlisted. Minutes. As soon as you do it, I can say unlisted. So I'm excited. You know. I can't wait. Um, let's talk about this idea you brought up during my stream yesterday about this Champions collab. So you got way too many good bids. Way too many good bands, bro. So let's tell the world you're gonna be the co-host. We don't yes. want the uh the the skull the sculling. So I'm not trying to I'm not <laughs> trying to be all full of myself, but I'm pretty sure you have played four songs of mine right now that have one on their own episode. I wouldn't say my song, but songs that I've been a part of. Uh two frequent misconception songs, and then uh hey you. I don't know if you play the other frequent misconception songs actually. So I think I have three what I would call fake rings on my finger. Maybe I'll get one more, but if not, you know what? I want to be part of this with you because you're doing such sick shit supporting all these artists. I won't even say bands, but artists, other different styles, a ton of people. So like, I want to be part of that, bro. I don't want to, I don't want to compete. I want to, I want to see people compete and I want to be part of that. 
Yeah, it should be fun, man. I was I thought it was a great idea. Um I have to back back scroll for months and and it's gonna take me a little bit to set it all up but i think it'd be cool especially with you saying oh we could get all their fans to kind of come in and vote for them day of and i was talking about with with uh, our friend trista and she was like yeah you should play multiple songs from each band and you kind of make your vote that way and then all the fans are in their voting so it should drive some numbers up it should be a win-win for everybody you got to make a day event where you can go live for quite like a couple hours dude get all those bands together Everybody wants to win, so they're going to hit their grandmother up, their moms, <laughs> their brothers, cousins, homies, neighbors, to be like, yo, jump in. You don't even have to watch the stream, man. Just jump in for a second and vote for my shit, which is going to bring more attention to what you're doing. And I think more people need to be supporting that so we can get more artists out here, man. You know what? There, There's not enough sharks in, this, in, in the music ocean right now. We need more people bringing some healthy competition, man. Like, you know what I mean? Everyone's going to get stagnant at some point and shows are about to come back. So I feel like people need to be promoting right now. So I feel like if, if you did a championship thing where you bring all the badass fans together, they're going to promote the hell out of that, which is going to bring attention to you, which is going to make bigger things happen. Well, Do I appreciate charity, it. Bro. it. It was, a, yeah, that, that's a good idea too. He suggested maybe we could do some kind of dono charity where uh, the fans donate to a good cause. Uh, I don't know what the cause is, but it's, we have a lot of room for discussion, out, bro. It's going to take a lot of planning, but I will 100% back you up because you have done nothing but back me up and not even to be unfair. You have played my song more than I think should be allowed at times. Like, you know, you're, you, you've, you've been it's that damn bro. good. <laughs> well, not even <laughs> it's just like, it, it's good to you and you appreciate it to me. And that makes me want to help you the fuck out, bro. You know what I mean? Well, I, I made a joke it. to you that I was going to be the top dono in your thing because there was a leader leaderboard and I wanted to fucking make sure people knew what was up and I fucking accomplished that. And now I want to accomplish another big thing with you, bro. <laughs> that was awesome. Bless your heart for that, by the way. That was, that was very yeah, kind. You, do, you would do it if, you know what I mean? It's too bad we're all, you know, eventually you're going to start getting some of these bands recognition. Somebody's going to watch your show, hear something they like, hook one of these bands up. And these bands damn well know that it was because of like something you were influenced with. And it's going to come back and like fill your pockets up, dude. Like it, it has to the great it, circle. Bro. There, there's some benefits like, uh, I, like you said, shows starting back up before COVID happened. Uh, bands all the time would invite me out to the whiskey and some other places in LA just to, just to see them to, want to do reviews so i would get free tickets all the time so it has some pros but this leads you me don't to think i would pay for you and the wife to fucking fly down and i would put you guys up to come to like when i started playing shows you don't think i would fucking do that bro hell yeah <laughs> i am uh, my brother actually went to nyu i don't know if you knew this so i've i've been to new york nervous. tons and tons of times i'm always okay. in i was in the broadway kind of area uh new york new york i've been there a couple of times and i love it yeah i have never done New Year's Eve in New York, but that's one of my bucket lists. But I've done, if you ever get a chance, New Year's uh, New Year's Eve in Vegas is unworldly. I've been through there, and I haven't been there yet. That is a goal of mine. If you get a chance someday, I'll meet you there. I'm a three-hour drive from Vegas. Uh, yeah. it's, I'm going to make a side project that's like Bruno Mars style and be hella poppy, and I'm going to go sell out in Vegas for like three years of my life. I have it planned in the next couple of years, bro. Just a lot of weed and just jazzy shit, and I just I want to be posted in Vegas for a couple of years. Dude, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm I've almost moved there. I've almost moved there a couple of times. Bright lights, big city, dude. It's, like It attracts people like us. There's too much busyness and too many people there. We like that. Yeah, that's why I like Albany that's near us, because that's like kind of where everyone kind of collides to. So you got to be near a little bit of the busy parts of town. Last question I got for you is now that concerts are starting back up, what's the first ticket? Like you have you heard of an artist that you want to see and they're like, hey, we're this these go on sale next week. Like who who are you buying first um that you want to see live? Myself. No. Um, you know what? I'm pretty sure I saw a bunch of things of corn coming around and I fucking love Jonathan Davis. So if I was going to be investing, it would definitely be trying to go see corn sometime soon. Really Dude, you, you know to. who's you know who's opening for for corn? Who? Stained, but Ooh. stain stains cool. Stains cool. I I got a stain story too. But um, stains gangster. Uh, fire from the gods. Do you know Ooh, that? Ooh, I've seen a few videos of him. They're opening, and then sixty eight. If you don't know sixty eight, it's it's two members of the chariot, which is like one of the mm. most insane live bands I've ever seen. They do like backflips off of shit. 
they throw their guitars like 20 feet in the air and catch them like it we'll is never do that it shit. is unworldly their live show but, that's um, dope though <laughs> so it would be a good one if you, if you get to go to that um i heard somebody <laughs> jamming driving by in a truck yesterday playing stained uh that inside your ugly whatever that song was he was in a vibe bro he set the whole tone for the neighborhood stain still stain still valuable to play out there bro People still jamming this shit. Me and me and Aaron Lewis once both got a plane delay in Atlanta, Georgia, and we were just I Ooh. I don't smoke cigarettes anymore, but I used to. And they have a like in the airport, you have to go to like this little like shh, doors open and close this way, and it's like a little twenty by twenty room filled yeah. to the brim of smoke. And Ooh. there's Aaron Lewis and his guitarist, and I'm like I'm like doing one of these and he kind of catches it and he goes come here come here talk to him for 35 minutes nicest guy in the world i was gonna say dude if he got your attention you were about to talk to him i could tell you that's that's the type of person you are bro if you know somebody's doing something be it famous or not i know you're gonna ask him a bunch of fucking questions I, that's dope I'm one i of those like people. that you get in those i'm like hey hey <laughs> hell yeah lloyd that's sick, dude. mr rattle sky what's an, up it is an honor and a pleasure this is a lot of fun man I Thank you so you much for having time me, bro. Out of your I'm day. excited for the things you're doing, man. I, you need to keep pushing, and I appreciate your support and everything that I've been doing. What What is the name of the song I'm about to to do right after this? The song you are about to review is going to be called Shattered Shell. Um, it was the instrumentals. Um, it's produced, uh, mixed. Instrumentals was written by Randy Presquella legendary fucking dude right now um you actually just told me i won't ruin your you can you can spill the beans you can spill the beans i can spill the beans because i was involved in it yeah. i suggested that you interview randy because randy is fucking dominating right now he's got a song number one in the new core playlist on spotify he's i think we're on our fifth song right now about or wait we're on our sixth song right now about to be eight he has been part of so many bands out here and he doesn't even tell me half but he's hard to book, man. I can't book him until July. That's what I'm saying. Like he's doing big things. So you're about to interview him. And he just helped me write an instrumental killer writer. Um, the reason I keep going to him is it's not only because he's good at this, but he takes it personal and he'll sit there and be like, no, I know you can do better than that. Or he's like, I know you got the little belt in you, bro. Like he, he hypes me up and that is the most important thing a producer can do. So I'm actually jealous that you get to interview him, bro. That's fucking lucky on your part. Hey, it wouldn't yeah. have happened if you hadn't suggested. I didn't even think about it. Um, oh, I bugged the shit out of Randy. He probably annoyed at me. I give, <laughs> I throw him so many ideas just like I do you. So I think he did that to shut me up. Yeah, that one <laughs> is, I we have it set for June 4th at noon. Friday, June 4th at noon, which would be 3 p.m. your time. You lucky motherfucker. <laughs> it should be a good one. So Shattered Shells, be on the lookout for that in uh, approximately two hours. That should be posted. Uh, I'll hit him up so you, I'll hit you up so you can know. Please, 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 guys, go to at Burn Like Stars Forever, like his page, follow him, support him. What's up? What's some other stuff you want to plug real fast? Some stuff I want to plug real fast. Yeah, I, I I hate plugging myself. I know you have to do it. I'm ne I'm terrible at media management, bro. I hate I hate doing all that stuff. So I I'm trying to find friends that are working on stuff like that to do it. But um, Facebook and YouTube. I I'm not a really big fan of having music on Spotify. Once I start getting a few more songs and a couple albums, I'll make that move and start putting music on there. But for now, YouTube and Facebook is has just been working out for me and stuff. So I would just say that. Um, I keep butchering his last name, but uh, Randy Presco Presquella from If I Were You. Please check him out. And if anybody's working on music, definitely hit this dude up because he's doing wonders for me. I I only take like. 25% credit for songs that I do. It's really him like like pushing us to do it. So those are my plugs. <laughs> I usually at not this to, not to mention you've reviewed three music videos of mine, which have been done by Paxton from Fogo Media. That dude is a legend himself. So and he asked very little from us to begin to do those. So he did that because he believed in the music that we're doing. And he's in my ear as much as you are. So shout out to him as well. Shout out. At this point, I usually have everyone do an intro for me right here, but I know you're working on something special. I have my uh, my buddy, um, Tony, who used to be my boss when I worked at Dave & Buster's, is really good at making these cool, trippy videos. So I will give you a hint because I don't have it ready yet. It's going to involve some Rick and Morty figures and some weed. How about that? I love it. I can't, uh, can't wait to see it, man. <laughs> Out of coons what'd you say what'd you call it coons no try saying albany because i love how you say it. albany albany 
Albany. You like to say Albany. Albany. That may be how you say it too. I don't know. Coho's <laughs> in New York. Out of Albany, New York. Mr. Lloyd Ratowski, aka Burn Like Stars. I love you, brother. This is a lot of fun, man. I'm excited Thank to hear so Shattered Shells right after this. And we getting juicy sometime next month. Let's Be on the go. lookout for that. Be on the lookout for that. But yeah, man. Uh, cheers. Thanks for doing this. Thank you so much, brother. Have a good day. You too.